Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to take the platform tool inside a new engine. Here, I already have Unreal open, and of course, I have my dig digital asset right here already. I have some other things all also available. So I have my actual models, some materials with that. So that's already set here to go. Of course, importantly, is within the engine. So make sure you have within the engine installed. Otherwise, you won't be able to open the tools. So by default, let's just check and drag and drop our tools. So here I'm going to just grab my asset, drag it in the scene, and it should start calculating. And probably by default, uh, we don't have any results. So this tool expects an input. And of course, we're not providing an input. So it will just say nothing here. So we're going to grab, for example, a cube. Could be another shape as well. Uh, let's make it quite large like so. so this is for example like a platform i would like to have for my character to walk on so i'm going to then select my houdini tool i'm going to scroll down until we have inputs i'm going to say we want to pick something from the world i'm going to say start selecting i'm going to select a cube if you have multiple cubes you can select multiple of them and we're going to say use that selection so now that single cube is added to our system and already you can see that something happened here what I can recommend doing here is with these cubes, if we scroll down to the rendering options, we can say actor hidden in game. So when we do that, we can now quickly hide the cube. So you can see that we already have a result that is working. So I have a cube and if I would move it or uh, rotate it, uh, we will see that then our tool follows that positioning. So the next thing that I want to look at is we are want to place our side borders that we have so i want to remove the block out shapes with actual the models that i have here prepared to use so you can grab something that you already have you can make something you can go search on mega scans for assets and so on so there's a variety of ways on how you can like plug in your own models to your own project so here on the side i have my models so these are some example models here so i just have like one big normal bar part which just like this is sort of like the main uh, shape that i wanted to be scattered along the along the lines here and then for the corner parts i have some more uniqueness so i have two corner pieces so one corner piece is like uh, looks like this and it's basically a version that nicely fits here in the corner so you can see that we can just use this piece to then have a nice round corner effect so I will use this piece to have corners. So if I would now copy my model like so, then you can see that we will have basically a quite nice corner feel. So that's how the tool works with the corner piece. It's then the same for the other side of this model because the other side is, is looking like so, so it will look different. So I have also a unique piece for that. And it's the same setup um, like that one. So you can see that we can nicely round up this part here. So this is how that will work and um, how I will use that. So let's start by implementing this in our tool. So back again in Houdini, we have our tool. I can go back. Uh, I can see currently at my setup that we have like this weird line over here. And I might want to here when we calculate the silhouette of the shapes, might be interesting to also do a facet step. So this node can be used to here remove inline points. So when we enable this and we see our result, uh, you can see that we are now sort of like clean up, cleaning up that line. Um, what might also be interesting to do with Unreal is later on, it might be interesting to actually implement a flatten uh, edges option. So because the cubes of Unreal might have weird geometry and we are basically now flattening them. So I'm going to place that here uh, already. Now let's talk a bit more about then the actual instancing of models. So I'm going to go over here where I cal calculated the border. And we're not going to use the copy to point system anymore. It's going to be the same for the corners. We're not going to use copy to points anymore. So what we're going to output is we will output here these points. So each point represents that model. So with that, we, could, we are having to create an instance. So if you type in instance, we can have the lab instancing attribute node. So here, plug that in over here, and we are now being able to instance. So here, we can already see that we have like a special section here for Houdini engine. And we can want to, of course, enable create instancing for Unreal. So that basically means that if we open our attributes, it will here uh, create Unreal instancing 
the values. So currently it's empty because we have not specified what model we should use. So that's how that work. So we need to here set a path. We need to set the location of what model to use. So for that, we need to go back to Unreal. And in Unreal, we are going to find our asset. For example, this part, we're going to right click and we're going to say copy the reference. So this will create, so this will copy the, the location where this is stored in my Unreal project. So we're going to go back then in Houdini. We are back here. And but now I can just simply paste that path. So we're now pasting this path. So let's check if that works. I'm going to override the line over here. And I'm going to now go back to assets, save my platforming tool. Then in Unreal, we're going to click to our tool and we're going to say uh, rebuild. And as you can see, now it should actually have these models. So what I can see is that the scaling is not properly done. So I need to specify the scaling a bit better over here. But I can already see that the placement of the models are correct, but the scaling of it is wrong. So here in Houdini, uh, we can check some scales. So the cool thing about this attribute node, we can already see what is going to happen with our results. So here, if we're going to go to guides and scale up the guides, this is basically what is happening. So we can see that on the uh, red axis here, we are scaling our objects a lot. So probably here in my previous setup here, if I go in this node, I probably here set a certain scaling of values. And we probably want to uh, here this width uh, to be smaller. So I'm going to probably just check the size, which is five. And uh, I'm going to copy the, this code here. So we're going to copy paste what we are having here, which will return value five. And I'm going to say that the width should be divided by that value, which will be five. So I'm going to now here quickly check my scaling. And you can now see that uh, it's now a bit more uh, consistent or at least not that large of a value. So let me remove that quickly so you can see the difference. So you can see that we're now scaling it as a by larger values. Uh, so here with that. So that was something that I had to tweak. So width will always return value five. So the width value was measuring how long the pieces are. So we need, we also need to divide the width by the actual size of the model, which is here five. So we are normalizing that bit more. So when I go back now to my instancing node, we can see that we don't have that crazy scaling value anymore. So this is always like a great node to quickly check what's going on. We can also here go to point transformations. We can think, we can quickly scale this up or down. Uh, we can add some minimum and maximum values, as you can see, if you want variation. But in this case, we don't want variation because they need to fit nicely into each other. We can also do rotations. So here we can uh, rotate around the blue axis. So we can rotate the models. So let's say that my model, the blue axis should be on the other side. So we're going to click to rotate, for example, around the green one. So green axis, and we're going to rotate this. So we have like the other side. So probably like uh, 0.5. So now we are rotating that to the other side. So this way we can quickly sort of like define the rotations a bit better. So I'm going to leave it as, uh, as default for now, since they were okay. So let's again, save our tool and jump back. I'm going to hit rebuild and now we're having better scaling, but of course they're not fitting nicely into each other. So what I also want to do is that probably I want to check how long this model is. And I can see that the approximate size is 200 units. So I'm probably going to have to go here to my border uh, settings and the length should probably be then two. And as you can see now, they are nicely fitting into each other. So my default value of five should actually be two in this case. So, so that is done. Now let's take a look at the corner parts. So we're going to basically do the same logic or system uh, by having an instance. So I can already here grab a copy. So I'm going to right click, grab a copy of my model. Then in our setup here, we're going to again place an instancing node, so labs instancing node. So we need to replace this result. And in here, we are going to again say that we want to create Unreal instance and we want to copy the path. So I just copied it. So we're going to just paste it over here. So we can also double check here the scaling by here creating this. So I think that will be okay. So they are okay. And let's implement that uh, right over here. So you're going to just say, say 
and check it out. So we're gonna again click rebuild. And now with the rebuild, we can see that we now have these corners in place. So that's exactly what I want. So they really look nice and they all, all have like this nice rounded corner side. Um, so probably for viewing that other, other corners, I'm gonna just make the shape a bit more complicated like so. Let's say I have a platform that goes like that. I'm gonna then add my other cube. So start selecting. I'm gonna hold shift and, and now I have these two cubes. So I have the same result and now I need to have that corner. So I'm gonna here click on this and get a reference. Then in Houdini, we're gonna just copy this node. I'm gonna input here on the other side. I don't need these copy two points anymore. You can still use them for like previewing stuff in Houdini, but they are not that useful anymore uh, in Unreal. So I'm gonna redirect the lines over here. Then I'm gonna go back to our setting the paths, gonna delete this and paste my new value. And we're gonna just here go back, go back and hit save. And again, rebuilding here in Unreal. And as you can see, now we are having that corner part. So now we have these smooth corners over here. So we have these nice roundings on every corner now. So that system is in place. Like the more models you build, the more variation you have. You can also have this as parameter. So you can have instancing values as well. And now let's take a moment also to focus on adding the materials here. So just adding that uh, material. And it's gonna actually be the same as creating instances. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna say copy reference. Then in Houdini, when we have here our planks, uh, we're gonna just type in material and you will find a Unreal and Unity material. So Unreal material, we're gonna plug that in over here. And we are just going to override this value with our own path that we just created. So again, we can just press uh, save again. What we can also do, like I said, we can now go into our properties here, go to parameters, and we can now create, for example, a folder uh, specified for instancing or materials. So we can now say instances, and we can just simply grab here this path. So we can just grab this, and uh, can grab the other ones, and this one. And of course, give this like some better naming so you know a bit what's going on in Unreal, and then we can just click accept. Now we're going back here into Unreal, and uh, just again clicking rebuild. And now here we have automatically assigned that wooden material. Also now we have those instances here and we can actually just drag and drop models on here. So I can now just drag and drop this model and as you can see it will now calculate in that position. Uh, so of course like this model is not really made for this position, uh, but that's like the way on how we can very quickly get more variation, just drag and drop things around. Now in terms of like the wooden planks, uh, we can here have the UV slider, so we can play around with UV offset. We can also play around with the styles of different planks. Um, and in previous videos, I mentioned you should maybe interesting to build more styles, build like a bunch of different styles for your project. And this way we can, as you can see, like build platforms in a quite interesting way. So we can just drag the cubes, play around with that, and we can like very quickly block out a walkable area, for example, for a certain map and uh, things like that. So as you can see, very quickly, we can build something like this. That was it for these videos. So I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.